<laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Hello, everyone. Thank you all for for joining, uh, listening in. Hope you all being safe, uh, staying at home if you can during this time. And I hope you find this talk entertaining, maybe useful. We'll see. Uh, yeah. So here to talk about custom React renderers. Um, yeah. My name is Paulo Hagonha. I'm a, a Brazilian. I've uh, been here in Sweden for four and a half years. I got adapted to the winter. Here's I love biking even on. And I commute even on like uh, on uh, winter uh, and uh, snowstorms. <laughs> um, and as you know, I work at uh, Moyang in a project called Minecraft that we just uh, played. I don't work on the Java version. I work with the uh, in the Bedrock version uh, with a team uh, that's called Core UI. We are composed of JavaScript developers, C++ developers, and designers. Here's like part of our team uh, playing the Moyang uh, private uh, server that we call Spawn Point. Uh, and uh, if you saw my previous talk of your come here for the Fika.js, you might be wondering, and yes, we are using web technologies to build uh, game UIs, uh, but we're not actually using like a browser. We're using a technology called GameFace, which is built by this company called Coherent Labs. And it's actually like a custom browser engine, which is like a layout engine. So they took a subset of HTML and CSS and build a, a tiny browser that is meant to be performant to be embedded in games. And we basically use this uh, to build the UI games for, for Minecraft. Uh, and to build our pieces of UI, we're, of course, using React. Uh, if you want to know more about our process to get to this technology, our stack, and other challenges involved in using React and web to build the game UIs, I gave a talk last year at Fika.js. Thanks, Maxine. Uh, and you can follow this link. I'll share all this later uh, to, to know more about it, or just search on Google for Fika.js. You'll find it. OK, but I guess most of you uh, might have heard of React, or use React, or use it on your day-to-day -day, uh, development. And I guess the question that might come is, like, what is exactly a renderer? And if we look at this tiny kind of like Hello World snippet from a React application, there is already a hint. Uh, we can see that there is this render function that is coming from React DOM package. So React DOM is one of renderers that are available uh, from the uh, maintainers of the React uh, library. Uh, and it's the one that we use to build uh, applications for the web. But as we know, there's also another one that's very popular, which is uh, React Native, that allows us to basically build our same React code, but then target it to run on iOS and Android. And this is kind of like what it looks like. On the left, we have a code of React application that's uh, built for the web, and on the right, one that's built for, for the React Native. And the main difference between the two of them is that the, we, on the left for the web, we use divs and paragraphs. Those are the host components for web. And on native, we have views and text, which is the host components for the native platform. And host, is the, in this case, is like the browser or iOS or Android. And when we break this apart, we have, of course, the React package uh, for both of them. And then we have distinct implementations for React DOM and React Native on each one of these platforms. Uh, the React package is like is the thing that we interact directly most of the time. This is where we have all most of the public facing APIs, like the use state, use effect, uh, and so on. And React DOM or React Native, that's where actually the bunch the, of the heavy work is actually going on. It's in this package that actually the diff is calculated, and it's also here that we actually get to apply the changes, in this case, to, to, the, to the DOM, to the browser. But this actually is not a monolith package. Actually, if we look under the hood, we can see that it's actually composed of other two smaller pieces, two major smaller pieces. And the reconciler is actually the piece that's doing the heavy work. While the, the specific host implementation is actually part of a DOM host config that's specific to React DOM. And when we compare this with uh, React Native, you can, we can see that the reconciler is the same for both of them. It's just that the host config will be implemented specifically for each platform. And lucky for us, the React reconciler is a package that is published by its own from the React uh, core developers. And it's a package that you can use to build renders. However, it should be noted that the API for this package is not stable. So it will probably change uh, with newer versions of React. 
but you can use today to already create uh, renderers on your own. And the community actually created a bunch of stuff. Uh, we have, for example, React Blast, which is a renderer that allows us to actually write React applications and run them on the terminal. We have React 3 Fiber, which allows us to create React components that are actually be that actually become 3D objects in a 3D scene using 3JS, and many, many more. So if you look at NPM and take a look at React Reconciler, you can see there's like 214 dependence uh, packages on it. And of course, not all of these 214 are renderers that actually make sense for you to use in your project, but just shows basically the breadth of possibility that this allows. But given the stock, given our context, why do I even need a custom React renderer? And if we remember from the previous slide, I mentioned that React DOM is a renderer that supports all, all the major browsers uh, today. And from their documentation, you can see that it supports from Internet Explorer 9 and above. But what if we want to support Internet Explorer 4? I mean, that would be just another host environment, right? In the same way that we have iOS and Android, what would it stop me from implementing a renderer that targets Internet Explorer? I'm pretty sure there's a lot more problems that I would face instead of just building a custom renderer, but that's a fun experiment. So what we're actually going to try to do is a little bit more humble. So we're actually going to build a custom renderer that only renders the marquee tag. That's important, only the marquee tag. Uh, and if people don't know what the marquee tag uh, or haven't used it for a while and it's not as old as I am, this is a tag that is currently deprecated. It actually works in all the browsers, but you're not supposed to use it. And it's supposed to be faded out. And what it allows you to do is basically to create the classic DVD um, uh, screensaver that I have here with the FICA.js logo. And what we want to do then is construct this very simple React application that renders a marquee inside a marquee. Uh, and here I'm actually using a React DOM, uh, just the normal stuff. But what I actually want to do is instead of using React DOM, is have our custom implementation of a render and use that instead, which we're going to call React Marquee Renderer. So here's the part that I'm actually going to go and try some live coding. Uh, this is the first time I'm doing streaming. This is the first time I'm doing live coding in a talk. So hopefully that will go, uh, will go well. Um, so yeah, let's start it. So oh yeah, there's one more slide. So the only thing I've done before going to live code is basically uh, created a, a project using Create React App. If you've done, if you do React or if you've done React, you probably is familiar with this uh, package. It allows you to basically bootstrap a React application with testing and everything on it. So I just have this application here uh, that I created. It's a very uh, impressive application. Uh, it's just a, an app component that renders a marquee inside of marquee, uh, and you can see uh, on the left here, it's rendering just fine. The Fika.js logo bouncing around. You can notice that there's like a warning here in my VS code. Uh, that's actually because marquee is, de is, a, is deprecated and we're not, we shouldn't be using, but yeah, we're just ignore that for now. And even React DOM is complaining that like, I'm using scroll amount and VG color properties and React doesn't even know what, these, what those are, but it still works. Uh, the only functionality that this tiny app has is that I can click on it and you can see that it changes the color and it changes the speed that the Fika.js bounces around. I think we hit the corner there. Wow. And one thing that to notice is that there's a browser quickness that the speed only changes once it actually hits the, the borders, which I found fascinating while I was implementing this. But anyway, let's go to the, to the meat of it and build our custom renderer. So instead of using the, the full React implementation, I'm actually going to create my own custom renderer here. So I'm going to create a file called renderer. and then save this thing. And then from now on, I'm going to hide my tree view there. And of course, if I save this file, this thing will just going to blow up. And as I mentioned, there's the package React Reconciler. So if you want to start this implementation, the first thing that I need to do is actually import the Reconciler from React Reconciler. And I actually already imported this package. This is the only package installed on this fresh installation of, of, a, of a Create React app project. And then I need to create an instance of this Reconciler which you just do like that. And then it expects a single argument, which is called the host config. And the host config is just an object that should contain a bunch of methods, a bunch of functions that define how React should interact with this host. In this case, the host is the browser. So I'm just gonna provide for now an empty object for it. 
The final thing that we need to do here is actually to export the render function that our you know, React DOM is actually, you know, our application is expecting to call. And it passes the React element, which is the root, and a DOM element to render that thing. So yeah, let's just do that. Export a function, call render, and then this thing will take a React element and a DOM element. And then here I'm gonna do some special reconciler APIs. So I first I need to create a container. And the API for that is reconciler.createContainer. And the container, I need to pass basically what will have the container. Because this is a browser, it's basically the DOM element uh, that I'm going to render the React application. Then there's two more arguments. The second one is to enable concurrent mode, which is the way that allows uh, React to render a lot of stuff in concurrent mode. We're not going to use that for now. And if you want to support uh, hydra hydration, which is like if we are doing server side rendering and we want to kind of like mount on top of it, we also don't want to support that. Uh, the final thing that we need to do is actually call the reconciler and tell it to update a container. And we're going to pass the React element that we're going to update this container, the container with. And there's two more arguments, and I'm just going to pass null. Once I save this, oh, not false, so no Portuguese, it's English. Save that. And yeah, it's still broken. And the reason it's broken is because I need to implement the methods on this host config. And what I'm doing, going to do now is actually just copy a small snippet of code that I have here on the side and just paste it because it's a little bit of much to type. And you might be looking at this right now and seeing, okay, that's a lot of stuff. And indeed it is. Um, but we're going to go a little bit one by one. So the one that we need to get this application going. If you're wondering what I got, where I got these functions from, from is from the type definitions of the React Reconciler package. So if you want to start to get something on the screen, so yeah, right now there's nothing going on here. And there's nothing going on here because we actually need to implement these host methods to actually make something going on. If I want to see kind of like what's going on, I can start by just doing a console log on this create instance. And I'm going to just like, let's put an emoji here. Uh, and let's print the type and the new props. Let's save this. And you can see being printed here on the console two console logs. And they match basically what our application is trying to render. So we have the first one here is like it's passing the behavior alternate and then a scroll amount of 10. And the other one is basically the other component that we have on the top. So the, the, this create instance will be called by the reconciler every time it needs to create an instance of a host component. And a host component is basically every HTML tag. So every component that is not created by, by us, like the app here, which is a component, is a host component. So only for these tags, this create instance will be called. And I can see it's being called twice. Given this is web, we know what we need to do, right? If I want to transform this into something to be rendered on the browser, I need to create like a DOM element. So I'm going to call this instance, and then I'm going to go to document and create a uh, no, create, create element. Yeah, and then create element expects one argument, which is the name of the tag. If this was React DOM, we would expect a type here, so we'd be able to render p div whatever. But this is our marquee render, so we always render. We always gonna oh, we always gonna create marquees. Uh, and then for now, I'm just gonna return this instance, and then I guess I can remove the console log. The next thing that we need to implement is this create text instance. This thing is called whenever React needs to render text. Because this internally is actually a component. Uh, so every time there's inline text or numbers that is not a component, this, uh, this will be called. And for the browser, we need to, call, to create something that is called the text node. So I need to cr create a text node. And then I'm just going to pass the new text in it, to it and return that as well. So as I save this, you see that still nothing is going on. And again, nothing is going on because I need to make something happen. React doesn't know how to put this on the browser. So next methods that I need to implement is both the append and initial child, which is also very simple. It's just append child and the parent. And the append child container, just like parent. Save these two. And hopefully, we're going to get something on the screen now. Uh, yeah, we do. But it's, of course, not what we expected, right? It doesn't have the bouncing. It doesn't have the background. And the reason it doesn't have any of those is that we need to actually implement it as well. So the props that we need to implement are all these width, height, direction, behavior, and so on. So I'm going to start with just the width. So what I need to do is kind of like this. So if, if someone passes the new prop uh, width, 
if someone tried to pass us that in, I'm just going to go on the instance.width and set it to the new props.width. Oh, sorry, save that. So now we should get to, yeah, you see that the PKGS now started a little bit to the left because now the box actually has size. And I need to do that for all of the properties that we want to support. So I'm going to as well just copy that from the side because it's a couple of stuff to type, but I just basically did that for all the properties that I have. And if I save this, we can see that now we have the our application back looking as it should uh, from our first example. So very, very quickly. Uh, but if I try to click this, you see that nothing is happening. It's because I need to actually also tell React how to do an update. And then there's two methods that I need to, to do something. The first one is prepare update. And the, the real implementation for this one is that we should actually return a payload, which kind of like should be like an object, which contains maybe a list of things that need to happen. And then this payload is then called, uh, is, is then passed to the commit update function. And then this is where we get what we need to do. And then we actually do something. Because it's a very contrived example, I'm just going to do return true. And then on the commit update, uh, we can see what's going on. So I'm going to do also a console log here. And then instance, and then new props, just new props to see. We also get the old props as well. And if I click now, you see that the commit update is being called. I get a reference again to the instance, uh, and then the new props that I need to update. And again, from what we did on the create instance here above, it's a very, it's going to be basically a, a similar pattern. I'm just going to check if, for example, the, oh yeah, like I don't want to implement all of these. So if I check, our implementation of our app, we actually have BG color and scroll amount are the only you know, properties that we are changing. So let's just implement support for those. So if the uh, old props dot, so I need to change for BG color, so BG color, if that becomes different, you know, the new props becomes different, then I'm actually gonna do instance dot BG color and set it to the new props dot BG color. So if I save this file now and click on, on my thing, you can see that the background now is updating. Of course, the speed of the thing is not changing. For that, we need to implement for the scroll amount. So let's just do that as well. So if old props dot scroll amount, if that's different than the new props dot scroll amount, then instance dot scroll amount equals the new props dot scroll amount. If I save that, then yeah, now we have basically our application back to all the functionalities that we had before. And this is kind of like what I wanted to show as a quick demo of like building a renderer. You can see that it's actually not a lot of code. With like 84, 85 lines of code, I actually got a custom renderer that makes this thing work. And it, has, it covers all the functionalities that, that we had before. Of course, there's a lot of stuff missing. My render doesn't support setting a class name. It doesn't support setting the style. It doesn't support refs. Uh, it only supports uh, handling on click. So it's a very, very simple implementation. But it gives you an idea of like, if you want to build your own, this is where you start. Yeah. So with that, let's go back to the presentation. So if you're wondering from this, like uh, I actually completed the implementation of a marquee renderer, and I published uh, an open source package on NPM that you can actually install on your project and try it yourself. The source is also available there. It's a, it's a complete package. It has type annotations. Unit, it has a unit test, one unit test. Uh, so it, it could be a good reference to, to get started if you want to try your own, your own project. Um, yeah, so yeah, with that then, let's, let's say that you do want to test this package in the wild. So again, if you go to your project and you install the, our, you know, our marquee render, and instead of importing React DOM, you import our marquee render instead, you're actually going to get basically your entire application rendered with marquee tags. And when I tried this in our project, I was hoping to get something more interesting. But Chrome just said, uh, no, that's too much. I, I'm, I don't know what you want here, and just gave me a, a white screen. Uh, on my implementation, I actually end up putting some logs like you know, React gives you warnings. On my warnings, like yeah, you're using the wrong tag. You should just use marquees. Okay, but okay, we know what a renderer is. We know how to create one. But how does this relate to Minecraft? 
So as I mentioned, we're using this uh, middleware called GameFace, which is this tiny kind of like browser implementation, right? And Green Labs actually officially supports React DOM uh, to be used on it. So that's how we started building on top of GameFace. We just you know, import a React DOM, and we could basically get a normal React application and start rendering on top of GameFace, which is fantastic. But we actually need, you know, in the same way that GameFace is a subset of a browser, what we need is actually a subset of React DOM, right? We don't need to support IE9. Uh, we don't need to support inline SVGs because that's not even supported by GameFace. And there's all a lot of tiny stuff that we don't need that we could probably shave some performance by just implementing our own custom implementation. And that's what we try to do. So we created our own React GameFace uh, renderer that it's kind of like using the reconciler, having our own custom host config. And that's what we got. So our custom renderer, render our application in Chrome is around 50% faster, mounting kind of like a test screen that we created, which is a pretty significant number. Uh, when we test it on the Xbox, uh, Xbox is a slower platform than compare my, to my MacBook, uh, but it's still like got around 17% faster than the default React DOM implementation. Again, this is comparing our custom renderer versus the default the React DOM implementation. And this is all still using DOM APIs. GameFace provides us the DOM APIs, and we're using it to, to implement this. But there is an opportunity to build custom APIs to get more performance out of this as well. But of course, building your own renderer has some gotchas, right? And I think the most obvious one is that it's basically one more thing to maintain, uh, and one more thing that could be a source of bugs. So this is something to keep in mind of. If you use React DOM, you get that for free. And if you use this, this approach that we did, you're basically going to get one thing to, to implement. And to be clear, I'm not recommending anyone to build their own renderer to use it on the web. This is very specific use case. Use case we have an embedded browser system. It's a very specific case. And for us, I think it made, made sense. So yeah, probably not a good idea to start updating your browser to React Marquee uh, and go for it. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that the API for React Reconciler, as I mentioned, is currently unstable. So it will probably change. So once we get a new version of React, we're probably going get, to get to go back to our custom implementation and update some of the things in there. Another gotcha that we kind of like uh, realized a little bit later uh, is that we don't get profiling support out of the box. Um, it looks like it works because I think some of it is implemented on the reconciler, but I feel like still a lot of it you needs to be done by us on the host config. And given we didn't do anything, yeah, we don't get DevTools supported. So be aware of that if you're going to try building your own renderer. And the other thing is that we got obscure bugs. So we implemented our renderer, but then we forgot to support for updating you know, the commit update. We didn't implement, implement it for the source attribute. So we implemented something that was rendering an image tag, and it would mount. The source would be there, but then the image wouldn't change, and we couldn't figure out why it was broken. It took a while for us to remember that we had a custom renderer, and then we found that the bug was in there. We actually ended up writing a unit test for the renderer so that yeah, it's covered, and it won't happen again. So wrapping up, I hope I didn't went through this too fast. I was worried this might end up uh, taking a little bit longer, but I hope it was a good pace. Um, I really want to give a shout to this blog post from Atul. I don't know how to pronounce his name, uh, so I'm sorry for that. But this was basically our source for our implementation. It's a very well-written series of blog posts. So if you found this interesting and you want to try build your own renderer for some crazy idea, maybe supporting IE4, uh, I recommend uh, reading this uh, blog post. It's fantastic. And while I was working on this talk, I found this talk by Sophie uh, on, uh, on YouTube. Also a fantastic source. She goes a lot more in depth on the demo of like on the live coding of building your own renderer. So I also recommend you take a look at it if you found this interesting. And I, I need to give a shout to this. Like Moyang is uh, hiring. We in our team, we are unfortunately not hiring right now, but we have a bunch of positions there for working in all different parts of, of the company. So take a look. And with that, I just yeah want to thank you all for listening. Thank you, uh, Maxine, for hosting FikaJS. And yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you all. Thank you, Paolo. That was a really great, in inspiring talk. Uh, what, what I got, I have two questions. 
I, I, I don't see people asking them. Like people ask questions. Uh, yeah. I, have, I have two. First one: uh, Can the can the uh, element rendering code be asynchronous, or is it a requirement for being a regular synchronous function? Uh, that's a good question. I think it needs to be synchronous, but I'm 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 completely unsure because I don't know how that would work with React Native. I don't know how the bridge is implemented. Uh, if that is asynchronous or synchronous, so that's a very good question. I don't know. I, I, I just really got curious. So that's that's one yeah. thing that I would probably try on my own. Uh, another mm -hmm. thing, can you please uh, leave a link to your slides in the comments? Yes, of this I'll video? do that. I have to clean please, it up though because do. I have uh, I have a secret part here on the right that has a bunch of deleted slides that I need to get rid of, but I'll, I'll put it back. I'll, I'll share. And one more question: uh, While doing research on uh, this custom renderings renderers. Have you found anything about Unity plus interfaces done in React? Custom render to Unity from React? No, Have I haven't. Anything? No, sorry. But I know that I think uh, DICE, probably their approach when they try to build React on top of their game, uh, mm -hmm. I think it was they probably end up creating a custom render and doing something completely different than what we're doing. Because they, uh, yeah, they have yes. their own thing. I don't even know how they did it. Yeah, uh, I don't know if I can tell if how they did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you worked you worked there. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. worked there, and I know people who did this functionality, who implemented it. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's basic. It was basically React running in parallel with game en engine, and it was sending the the the, the object, the the mm -hmm. React DOM tree representation mm -hmm. to it, and then renderer was rendering the the, the tree. In the mm -hmm. engine, and uh, yeah, uh, I, I don't know how to how how like through what type of communication would you organize talking of like JavaScript and some C plus plus program? Yeah, so so the the way that's implemented right now would probably be better if I had like one of my C plus plus devs in the team to answer that. But we have a way to actually have a uh, a C plus plus struct object with you know functions and methods implemented mm -hmm. on it, and there's a way for them to basically map that object into a JavaScript object. So a struct in C++ gets mapped to uh, object in JavaScript, and it's basically the same uh, place in memory. So uh -huh. if they have a, a, an attribute with a string, that string is directly mapped to the object in JavaScript, and it's the same for function calls. Um, so that's how we, we do it, but not for the render. <laughs> for the render is actually you know DOM APIs that we call. So for us, it's like as if we're talking to a browser. Uh, but for anything extra that we do for like getting player information or playing back sounds or getting translations, then we end up doing this custom uh, object mapped in memory from C++ to JavaScript. That, that's that's cool because when I think how would I organize uh, this communication between rendering engine and the uh, React side something something, I'm thinking yeah. about either inter-process communication or maybe even WebSockets or something in this direction and this yeah, like, sharing memory. That's the that's the it's biggest difference. Process. This is one process. Yeah, so yeah. We're, there's no network layer. There's no. It, we're on the same process. We're running inside the game engine. So it, it, when we talk backend on our side, backend is C++. And it's, everything is immediate. So a lot of the patterns that you do for web dev, they change a little bit. So we end up having, for example, the source of truth, like a, what would be your Redux store. It's actually like a, one of these memory mapped objects that's coming directly from C++. And we try to consider that to be the source of truth. And if we want to update the state, we actually go through C++, C++ update the state, tell us now that it changed and we re-render. Uh, that's how we do it. So basically inside of your C++ process, you run uh, core, core, core JS or how is it called this? this so so it, is, it is, depending on, depends on the platform, like Bedrock is, is everywhere. So it's on iOS, Android, Xbox, PlayStation 4, Switch, Fire TV, I'm probably forgetting a platform. So it runs everywhere. Uh, it, 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 yeah, and, and depending on the platform, we actually have different JavaScript uh, runtimes. So it could mm -hmm. be V8, could be JavaScript Core, could be Chak Chakra Core. Uh, Coherent Labs, the company that's doing Game Face, they want to normalize so that everything is, it's, a, it's V8 everywhere. But mm -hmm. right now we have different VMs actually depending on the, on the platform. Do you know if, as a hobbyist, I can play with Game Face and just try out things? That's the thing. Like we we ask them as well because I feel like there's a huge potential on Game Face to be kind of like this electron kind of killer, 
because it's an optimized browser and you could use it like for creating you know custom applications in a much more performant way uh, than you would get with like Electrum because you don't get the full browser stack out of it. But unfortunately, their business model is very much kind of like targeted towards gaming companies and their license is not cheap. I think you can mm -hmm. probably download and try on your own, but like trying to release something, I don't think it's easy. I don't think they, they have like an indie uh, faction, but like I would double check with them, definitely. Go to their website, search for Cohen Labs uh, and check there. Uh, but from what I've heard last time, I know about it is, yeah, their business model was not targeted towards individuals and indies, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. But thanks for the great talk.